Hello everybody, this is City Scrapper. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel today. Today I have a scrapbook layout process video for you and this is the second layout that I made using the June My Creative Scrapbook limited edition kit. This month the limited edition kit had papers and embellishments that were mainly from the Prima Magic Love Collection, and the designer of that collection is Frank Garcia. And if you're familiar with Frank Garcia, he uses beautiful pinks and blues, and I just love working with these papers. There's also a lot of rose gold mixed in there, and a lot of the images have a love theme to them. So to start off the layout, I covered this whole sheet of pattern paper with some clear gesso. I mix together some modeling paste and a little bit of white acrylic paint and I'm using the stencil that's included in the kit in order to just add a little bit of texture to the background. And I'm drying the texture paste in between each application so I don't mess up the texture paste I already put down with the stencil when I put it over the top again when I go to put on more of the texture paste. I mounted my photo on some white cardstock and then I had a little scrap of gold paper so I mounted it again on the gold paper and then I mounted it on some adhesive foam just to pop it up a little bit. So now I have a little bit of texture in the background. You can see I didn't go crazy with the texture paste but I did want to add a little something. I like the way there was a rose gold border that goes across the top and the bottom and I wanted to add another border on the other side of that block of blue area that's on the top and the bottom and so I used my Martha Stewart punch and I punched out a border with some pink paper and then I was thinking that it would look really nice to have it inked on the edges so I just gently pulled it up and I'm applying some Distress Oxide in Victorian Velvet and I chose that color because it's a little bit darker than the pink that I punched the border out of. And then I thought that that would help to provide some contrast between the border and the area that I'm going to be laying it down on. So here you can see I'm just following the line of the top of that blue block of paper. I have this very, very small pom-pom trim in my stash. And I thought that that was a great match for the color and also the look of the page, so I decided to add some of the pom-pom trim along the top and the bottom as well. And on the back, I'm just using some ATG adhesive to attach those edges of the ribbon down. And then I do the same thing on the top, and I think it's very important that the ribbon be very straight, so I am following along with the edge of that border strip, but I also take out my T-square and I double check to make sure that the ribbon is as straight as I can get it. I don't know if you could ever have ribbon like this perfectly straight, but I do want it to be as straight as possible. And then again, attaching those ends down in the back. I'm not sure why there isn't any footage of it, but you can see right here that I added a very thin strip of pattern paper to the base of the ribbon, the flat part of it, on the top and on the bottom. And I inked the edges with some of the Victorian velvet, and I just used ATG adhesive and attached that over, like I said, the flat part of the ribbon, and I think that that helps it look straighter. Whenever I use this Martha Stewart punch or similar punches, I always feel like I need to put a pearl into in each of the little scalloped areas. So I got a very small pearl and I stuck it down on the top and on the bottom. And what I did right there was I just added a little bit of the Victorian velvet distress oxide to the modeling paste that's on the background. And I got a little bit on the background so I just used some water to clean it up and because I had coated the background with some clear gesso it came right up. It just adds a little hint of color. It doesn't make a huge difference but it's just a little touch that I think helps to bring everything in the layout together. Now I'm adding some of the Prima Dimensional flowers to the background. I have them in a loose L kind of configuration going around the photo. I have included some of the smaller ones and the medium ones and the bigger ones. I am also including the flower buds that were in the flower packs. I really love those. Once I had the flowers placed down on the layout, I played around for a little bit with some of the die cuts and the chipboard pieces. I'm going to be calling the 
lay out love. So I picked out a die cut and I also picked out a few pieces of chipboard and I'll be going back to those in a little bit. Now I'm taking those stems and I bent up the bottom and I wrapped the bottom around a little tool that I have there on the right. I got this idea from another scrapbook YouTuber. I cannot remember who it was, but I think it's a great idea because instead of cutting the stem in half and throwing it away, bending it up and then making a little coil just adds a little something extra to the layout. I don't know that it's accurate as far as I don't know if you would see those little coils with these kinds of flowers, but I just like the little touch that it adds. So I cut the border off of that ribbon die cut. It had a white border. Sometimes I like the white borders, sometimes I don't. In this case, I felt that the white border wasn't necessary, so I just fussy cut that off. And now you can see I'm just going around and attaching everything down. I am coiling all of those little buds, all of the stems like I did with the first two, and I'm just using the heavy duty gel medium to attach all these elements down. The photo that I'm using on this layout is a photograph of my husband and me, and it was taken on my birthday when we went out to dinner a few years ago. And I do tend to do what people always say not to do. I concentrate on scrapbooking photos of my two daughters, and I know that it's important to include photos of yourself. So I thought that this paper provided a good opportunity to get this photo scrapbooked. I've been with my husband for so many years. We've been together since I'm 22. I just thought that it would be cute to have a page that kind of celebrated us. And I know I should probably scrapbook photos of myself and my husband a little bit more often. I'll have to work on that. So I finished up with that large cluster and I was thinking that I wanted to add a little bit more fiber. So I'm using some tool here. The first time that I worked with tool, I thought it was going to be really, really stiff and hard to work with, but I find that when I work with it in small amounts, it's really not hard to work with at all. So I'm just taking some small pieces of it and I'm knotting them in the center and then I'm kind of bending them on the knot and I'm tucking them behind the flowers. And I don't include all of the footage of me adding the tool, but I continue to do the same thing. I knot the tool, I bend it in half, I cut it, I'll, I put it in place, and then if it has to be adjusted, I just go back and trim it a little bit. And this is the last piece of tool that I add, and I use my scissors to help me position it. And then I use some of the heavy duty gel medium, and I put a little bit of that under all of the tool, and that helps to, of course, hold it in place. I do end up using additional adhesive, though, on the tool just to make sure that it stays down but the heavy duty gel medium really does help to hold things in place. It's a very strong adhesive. Now I'm moving on to the title of the layout, which is Love, and this is a die cut. I'm attaching it to a thick piece of white cardstock, and I'm using a dauber to ink the edges, again with the Victorian velvet. And while I have the dauber handy, I also ink the edges of that little cherub that's over there on the left now. And I pop up the title on some foam, I was having trouble deciding if I should put the title touching the photo or if I should separate it a little bit. And in the end, I decided to separate it a little bit and move it a little bit over to the right. Now I'm trying to decide which items I wanna put in a little cluster around the title. I chose that one little piece of chipboard that looks like a dove as well. It has some flowers on it. And I really like the two doves, which is another piece of chipboard for over the photo. So I'm popping that up on some of the adhesive foam and attaching that down at the top and attaching down the title as well. I fussy cut out some roses from one of the pattern papers. So now I'm inking the edges of those and attaching those down to the right of the title. And here are some other fussy cut flowers. I'm just cutting a little bit extra off of them and I'm going to be tucking those off to the left and then there's another one of these kind of hanging ribbons and I cut that out as well and I'm attaching that on the flower cluster to the left. And then I was thinking that those flowers just stuck out a little bit too much. So I cut off one of the little, I think it's either a bud or a small rose and I put it on top of the title. 
and then there were some little tiny word strips and one of them says you are my everything so I attached that little phrase down to the heart that I already had in the flower cluster that's a chipboard heart and I just thought that was a, a cute phrase and appropriate for this layout now I'm going in with some pearls and this is something that I really like to do. I got this idea years and years ago from Marilyn Rivera. She's an amazing scrapbooker. She adds pearls to many of her layouts. I like to add all different color pearls and I try not to go overboard, but I always feel like the more pearls I put on, the nicer it looks. But in this case, I controlled myself and I did add a number of pearls, but not too many. I also have this bow. This bow is from a child's hair clip. I was in the dollar store and I saw that there were like six of them for a dollar. So I thought it was a perfect color for this collection. So I picked that up. And here I am using the hot glue gun to attach down the tool. And the hot glue gun just, is it just another reinforcement just to make sure that it doesn't in time come back up again. I wanted to include some leaves on the background. There's some rose gold on the pattern paper and there's also some kind of more traditional gold that is behind the photo on that paper that it's mounted on. So I wanted to include both of those colors. I don't have a rose gold embossing powder at the moment, but I did have kind of a coppery color. So I mixed together the two colors when embossing. I did that by taking each of the leaves and embossing the whole thing with the copper kind of color. And then after I had heat embossed each of the leaves, I went back for a second layer and I just put the adhesive in a few areas and put the brushed gold, which is more of the traditional gold, on top and then heat embossed that. And in that way, both of the colors were visible. And I think that that gave the leaves kind of a cool effect. Now I'm taking a sponge and some heavy white gesso and I'm just dabbing on a little bit of the gesso. This doesn't make a huge difference, but it just helps to add a little bit of highlight to the raised areas. And probably the only two areas on the background I did not want to get gesso on were the photo and that bow. And of course I got some on the bow, but it was fine. I was able to clean it up and you can't really tell. And now I'm adding just a couple of white splatters. I didn't want to add too many splatters because there's so much going on already, but I just felt compelled to add a couple of white splatters to the background. Even though I've already attached down the ends of the ribbon with some ATG adhesive, I wanted to just reinforce them a little bit more. So I have some white tape. It's very similar to masking tape. It's just white in color. And I just use that to provide a little bit more insurance that those ends of the ribbon would not come back up again. Now, just to add a little bit of shimmer to the flowers, I'm going in with some Bow Bunny glitter paste. This just adds a little bit of shine and some sparkle. It doesn't make a dramatic difference, but I just like the way it, like I said, it adds a bit of a sheen to the flowers. So I just go around to each of the flowers and add a light coat. And I'm not trying to be perfect here. I'm just getting a little bit of the glitter paste on all of the flowers. Now I'm going to add some photo corners. I had embossed these earlier. I cut these out with an EK Success Photo Punch and embossed them with brushed gold. And I'm also going to add a little pearl to each of them. And that is the last touch that I'm going to be adding to this layout. Here are some close-ups of the layout. Thank you so much for watching this video, everybody. If you like this video, I hope you will give it a thumbs up. I hope that you will check out all of the beautiful kits that are available on the My Creative Scrapbook website. The link is in the description box. They have new beautiful kits every month. Thank you once again for taking the time to watch this video. I hope there was something in it that you enjoyed, and I hope that everybody has a fantastic weekend, and I will see you all again soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.